Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. to the NPTEL lecture series on the calculus of variations. This is the 14th lecture of the series. In this uh, lecture, we will see that we will consider the functionals with moving boundary points. In the last few lectures, we have seen that we have considered various functionals where uh, the uh, functions which are called extremals which give us the optimal value of the functional they are known as extremals. Those extremals were uh, subjected to pass through those uh, points A and B and these two points A and B were fixed. Now, we will allow these points A and B to move uh, freely in the x y plane or freely uh, on uh, certain curves and in higher dimensions these boundary points will be allowed to move either on a curve or on a surface and we will consider various such cases in the uh, this lecture and subsequent lectures. So, here uh, recall that our functional i y here the simplest case which we considered earlier was like this integral x 1 to x 2. The integrand function was dependent on three variables x y as a function of x and then it is derivative y prime x dx. Here uh, this point A is x 1, y 1 and B x 2, y 2 are moving. in the x y plane. Here this y 1 is equal to y at x 1 and y 2 is y at x 2. So, situation is the following here we have this x y plane and we have these two points A which is x 1 y 1 and B x 2 y 2 and there is a curve this y x which pass through these two points. Now, these two points are allowed to move. So, A can move here and B can move here like this. So, this is A dash now or A x 1 dash y 1 dash and b is x 2 dash y 2 dash. So, here a and b can move in this x y plane and this y. So, let us say this is y 1 and this is y 2 and so on we can consider various such cases. So, first we will consider first we consider the case where this A which is x 1 y 1 is fixed and this B x 2 y 2 is allowed to move. in the x y plane. So, here we have the following picture now. Here let us say this A is this one and now this is fixed and this B is allowed to move. So, let us say this is one curve B of x 2 y 2 and then this is moving somewhere here 
b x 2 dash y 2 dash and likewise it keeps on moving b x 2 double dash and y 2 double dash like that. So, this b is allowed to move it can move anywhere or it can move along a curve uh, where this uh, will be then a constraint movement and we will consider these two cases separately. So, here this is called pencil of curves and uh, if this y x optimizes gives the optimal value value of i y when y is passing through this the fixed point point a x 1 y 1 and the moving point b x 2 y 2 then it also then y x also optimizes i y if a x 1 y 1 and b x 2 y 2 were fixed both fixed. Therefore, y must satisfy the necessary condition must satisfy necessary condition. that is Euler's equation uh, f y minus d by d x f y prime equal to 0. So, this is let us say 14.1 now the general solution of this is a second of 14.1 the equation 14.1 is a second order o d hence its general solution is a two parameter family of curves given by y equal to y of x c 1 c 2, where these c 1 c 2 are arbitrary constants behaving as parameters here. Since, a x 1 y 1 is specified one of the constants c 1 C 2, C 1 and C 2 is determine thus in this case when only B 
x 2 y 2 is moving, we get y equal to y of x. So, one of the constants we denote as c a one parameter family parameter sub family of. So, this is 14.2 of 14.2. So, these are all extremals subfamily of 14.2 which are extremals. because they are the solutions of uh, Euler's equation and so they are known as extremals. Hence, we consider the functional I y on this subfamily only given by 14.2 only. So, we consider here i y which is function of x and then here c like this integral x 1 to x 2 f of x y x c and y prime x c d x. And so, uh, now we will consider the variation of this functional uh, over this family of extremals and uh, then derive the uh, necessary conditions. So, we consider here delta i y. So, delta i y which is the variation of or rather first we consider the increment and then the linear part in the increment will be denoted as so this capital delta is denoting the increment and small delta will be denoting the variation so this will be x 1 to x 2 plus here we will take delta x 2 f of x. We will not denote here uh, the dependence on c. It is understood that wherever we are taking y here is only extremal the solutions of 14.2. So, y plus delta y they are functions of x and c both and y prime plus delta y prime d x and minus x 1 to x 2 f of x y y prime d x. So, here uh, picture is like this a is here this is fixed and now b let us say. So, 1 is this this is y x here b x 2 y 2 and now this point moves to somewhere here. So, this is so this point is x 1 and this is x 2. So, x 2 gets incremented by delta x 2. So, this is x 2 plus delta x 2 here and then. So, this is b x 2 plus delta x 2 and y 2 plus delta y 2. Okay. So, here now uh, we have 
this difference the capital delta i given by this. So, this delta i y can be written as x 1 x 2 we will break this x 1 to x 2 and x 2 to x 2 plus delta 2. So, first term we will write as x 2 to x 2 plus delta x 2 f of x y plus delta y y prime plus delta y prime d x and then plus here x 1 to x 2 is that term is left from here. So, x 1 to x 2 and uh, one term will come from here. So, collectively we get f of x y plus delta y y prime plus delta y prime minus f of x y y prime d x. So, this is let us say we call it 14.3. Now, the first term in 14.3 in 14.3 that is x 2 to x 2 plus delta x 2 f of x y plus delta y and y prime plus delta y prime d x. Here we apply the mean value theorem and write it as f of f at here x plus so rather x 2 plus theta delta x 2 and y plus delta y evaluated at x 2 plus theta delta x 2 and y prime plus delta y prime evaluated at x 2 plus theta delta x 2 times delta x 2. That is the length of the interval uh, x 2 to x 2 plus delta x 2. So, uh, this is by mean value uh, theorem by mean value theorem. of integral integrals, where here theta lies between 0 and 1. And this can also be written then by continuity that f 2 f evaluated at then x 2 and y plus delta y evaluated at x 2 here these are all dependent on c also y prime plus delta y prime at x 2 to delta x 2 plus some epsilon 1 which is a function of delta y and delta y prime. This is by continuity. of f, we are assuming that f is continuous in all arguments and this epsilon 1 delta y delta y prime divided by square root delta y square plus delta y prime square goes to 0 as delta y delta y prime tend to 0. So, that is the result of the first term here and so the second term here uh, the second term in 14.3 that is 
x 1 to x 2 f of x y plus delta y y prime plus delta y prime minus f of x y y prime d x is treated uh, using the Taylor's theorem. So, this can be written as x 1 to in integral x 1 to x 2 f of partial derivative with respect to y to delta y plus f of y prime delta y prime and times d x plus some epsilon 2 which is again function of delta y and delta y prime and epsilon 2 delta y delta y prime divided by y square delta y prime square this tends to 0 as delta y delta y prime tend to 0. That means, these epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are of higher order in delta y and delta y prime. Here, so this is by Taylor series expansion. of the integrand integrand that was in ok. So, this is by the Taylor expansion we expand it uh, Taylor by Taylor series and take only the first uh, these linear terms and nonlinear terms are put here which are satisfying. Uh, this property. So, here uh, we can uh, then shift this derivative as we had been doing earlier. So, this can be then written as integral x 1 to x 2 f y minus d by d x of f y prime delta y d x plus the boundary term that is coming from here. So, f y prime and into delta y this evaluated at x 1 to x 2 plus epsilon 2. So, then collectively we get this delta i y as. So, here the first term had this one. So, let us put this some number here uh, 14.4 and this is 14.5. So, from 14.4 and 14.5 we get this one as f we will simply write this as evaluated at x equal to f as all those arguments. So, all the arguments evaluated at x equal to x 2 and this is delta x 2 plus we get f y prime delta y evaluated at x 1 to x 2 plus some epsilon 3 here. Since f y minus d by d x of f y prime is 0 here. That is what is used here. So, the first term here or well, let us write it here itself. So, this gives us f y prime delta y evaluated at x 1 to x 2 plus this epsilon 2 delta y delta y prime. So, this is let me because this put it here up epsilon 2 delta y delta y prime and this is equal to this 
as this f y minus d by d x of f y prime equal to 0, because y being extremal. So, it is a solution of the. So, we can remove this from here, which is put there already. So, delta y delta y prime, where epsilon 3 is then satisfying the same. Zero as delta y delta y prime ten to zero. And now, as uh, since a is fixed, so a which is x one y one is fixed, we have. delta y at x 1 equal to 0 as before. And so, therefore, this delta i y is f at x equal to x 2 delta x 2 plus f y prime delta y evaluated x equal to x 2 only now plus this epsilon 3, which is delta y delta y prime. Now, here we, we observe that we have to find delta y at x 2, which is actually uh, this delta y at x 2 is not equal to uh, delta y 2. See this, this see that in the figure, this delta y 2 is the increment here, this is y 2 and so here it is gone up to here. So, this is delta y 2, this distance is delta y 2, but this is not equal to uh, delta y at x 2, which is actually equal to, uh, you will see that at y 2, uh, delta y at x 2 would be this distance completely. So, that is not equal to delta y at x 2. So, let us uh, find out this delta y at x 2. So, to calculate this delta y at x 2, we observe that from the figure, so let us see here that A is here and this this is x 1, x 2 and this is b x 2, y 2 and now it is gone here b x 2, y x 2 plus b is moved here x 2 plus delta x 2, y 2 plus delta y 2. So, this is x 2, this is x 1 here. So, this is x 2 plus delta x 2 and here we will have uh, this thing. Something like this. So, we will have uh, this is x 2. So, this one is delta y at x 2. 
So, let us write it, it slightly differently because here the figure is not coming properly. So, let us write it in slightly in a better way. So, let us take A here down so that x 1, y 1 and B up here. And now, it has moved to here this B x 2 plus delta x 2 and y 2 plus delta y 2. So, this is this is x 1, this is x 2 here. So, we will extend it here. This is so, this is the rectangle here. So, let us give the names here. Let us say this is ok. So, this is A, this is B. We put it up there. This is B, let us say here B x 2 y 2 and then this, let us put this let us give it a different name rather C. So, so B is moved to C and this is let us say L, M and N here. So, we see that this delta Y at x 2. So, the delta y at x 2 is B L, because at x 2 this is the increment here that is what is delta y at x 2, because delta y is the different uh, increment at each point x here. So, when x moves to x 2 we get delta y at x 2 here and this is actually equal to m n. See, L, B L is equal to m n and it can be written as C m uh, C n minus C m. So, delta y at x to B L equal to m n and this is C n minus C m. So, that is what is m n. Now, this C m C m over L m is approximately uh, the tangent of this angle. So, that is let us say this is some psi here. So, tangent of psi that is y prime at x 2. So, here uh, this is what is approximately y prime at x 2 and so we get C m equal to y prime at x 2 into L m. So, L m is uh, the increment that is delta x 2. So, this is approximately like this. And therefore, the C n, C n is nothing but delta y 2. So, therefore, uh, delta y at x 2 is C n is C n minus C m, which is delta y 2 minus y prime at x 2 into L m we have written as delta x 2. So, this is of course, this is approximately here. So, this is what we use in this. 
delta y at x 2. So, we know that so this uh, delta i is which is the, the variation of the functional i y is the linear part in the increment delta i y. So, here you see that this delta i y the, the linear part is this, this is the nonlinear part. So, we drop that nonlinear part here. So, delta i y is equal to f evaluated at x 2 x equal to x 2 and delta x 2 plus here this f y prime and delta y evaluated at x 2. So, we get f evaluated at x 2 and now delta y evaluated x 2 is written from here like this delta y 2 minus y prime at x 2 into delta x 2 times here. So, that is what we get here and uh, this can be then simplified f evaluate x equal to x 2 taking this with this common. So, we take f minus this y prime f this was sorry f y prime here it was f y prime. So, f y prime y prime into f y prime this evaluated at x equal to x 2 into delta x 2. So, we combine this term with this first one and plus f y prime evaluated x equal to x 2 into delta y 2. The necessary condition is, so this is let us say 14.5 right. The necessary condition for i y to have optimal value at y is that delta y delta i at y must be equal to 0. The, so, this implies that f minus y prime f y prime to x 2 delta x 2 plus f y prime evaluated at x equal to x 2 delta y 2 equal to 0. So, recall that these delta x 2 and delta y 2 were increments in the point this x 2 y 2. So, they are arbitrary we can take uh, delta x 2 any number here and delta y 2 any number. So, these are arbitrary and since delta x 2 so, we will call it as 14.6 delta x 2 and delta y 2 are independent variation. of x and y this x 2 and y 2. Hence, the coefficients here we can take delta y 2 0 and delta x 2 equal to 1 then we see that this uh, coefficient must be 0. Similarly, the other round will tell us this coefficient must be 0. So, f minus y prime f y prime 
at x equal to x 2 must be 0 and f y prime at x equal to x 2 must be 0. So, these are the conditions necessary conditions for this functional to have optimal value. So, that we have to choose that point x 2 for which these conditions are satisfied. Now, if the point x 2 y 2 moves on the curve y equal to phi x, then we have then this delta y at x 2 will then be phi prime at x 2 delta x 2 and so hence we get here this f minus y prime f y prime at so this is collectively for both at x equal to x 2 delta x 2 plus f y prime delta y 2 x equal to x 2. So, here delta y 2 rather reduces to f minus y prime and then you can take this delta y 2 here x 2 delta x 2 and substituting it here you get plus phi prime x 2 f y prime at x 2 evaluated at x equal to x 2 into delta x 2 equal to 0. So, here delta x 2 we can take common. So, f plus phi prime minus y prime of f y prime evaluated at x equal to x 2. Since delta x 2 is arbitrary, so the coefficient this must be 0. So, this is known as transversality condition. So, let us call it 14.7. 14.7 is called the transversality condition. here like a is here that is x 1 y 1 and then this b is moving along this curve y equal to phi x this is b that is x 2 y 2 here. So, we have to select that x 2 here. So, we have to select this x is moving here this is x 1 is fixed and x 2 is moving here. So, we have to select that x 2, so that x 2 y 2 is on this curve and this optimal the extremal y x gives us uh, that means, this y x is uh, giving us the optimal value of i. So, that is what is required here. So, we will find the condition that is what is known as the transversality condition. So, this condition must be satisfied at x 2 in order uh, this extremal y x which joins this point fixed point x 1 y 1 and this moving point b that is x 2 y 2. Uh, so, that this point we have to select that point here on this curve for which this transversality condition is satisfied. So, let us see in this example.
So, let us consider this functional x 1 to x 2 some function f x y square root 1 plus y prime square d x. Here, f x y is assumed not 0 for all x y. or rather the moving point, this is not 0. So, here this point A x 1 y 1 is fixed and this x 2 y 2 moves on y equal to phi x and here uh, this f of x 2 y 2 such that this is not 0. So, that is that means this f this x y is f x y is not 0 on phi x or let us say we put it because y 2 we do not know. So, we put it like this that f x phi x this is not equal to 0. So, here we see that this f plus phi prime minus y prime f y prime this x equal to x 2 this should be equal to 0. So, that is the transversality condition here and now f is f x y square root 1 plus y prime square. So, putting it here, so we get f root 1 plus y prime square plus phi prime minus y prime into this f over square root 1 plus y prime square into y prime. This is what at x equal to x 2 or let us put it this equal to 0 at x equal to x 2. So, simplifying this we get f into 1 plus y prime square plus phi prime minus y prime to f y prime equal to 0 or f plus f y prime square plus phi prime f phi prime y prime minus f y prime square equal to 0. So, this cancels. So, we get taking f here all this at x equal to x 2 at x equal to x 2. So, we had assumed that here uh, this f since x 2 y 2 are moving on f and we have f at x 2 and phi x 2 will not be 0. So, this implies that 1 plus taking f out. So, 1 plus phi prime y prime equal to 0 or at x equal to x 2. So, this implies that phi prime at x 2 y prime at x 2 equal to minus 1. So, that means this here this curve the y prime is the tangent here and phi prime is tangent on this curve. So, here at this point they should be orthogonal. So, at this point here uh, the tangent here and tangent to this curve they are orthogonal at x equal to x 2 extremal y equal to y x must be orthogonal
to the curve y equal to phi x. So, the transversality condition is the orthogonality condition uh, of this extremal and the given function on which a given function phi on which the point x 2 y 2 move. Now, the next example this is 14.8 sorry 14.9 we have to take. So, in this i y is x 1 to x 2 root 1 plus y prime square over y d x and y at x 1 is 0 and x 2 y 2 moves on the line, the straight line y equal to x minus a. So, here the transversality condition f plus phi prime minus y prime f y prime equal to 0 at x equal to x 2. So, that is what we get here in this case. So, here phi x is this x minus a. So, phi prime is 1 and here f is here f is root 1 plus y prime square over y. So, we get root 1 plus y prime square over y plus this y prime is 1 here. So, 1 minus y prime the uh, f y prime means this y will come here 1 over root 1 plus y prime square and then 1 over 2 and then the 2 y prime. So, this leaves us y prime here. This must be equal to 0 at x equal to x 2. Simplifying this, we get that 1 plus y prime square plus 1 minus y prime y prime equal to 0 or 1 plus y prime square plus 1 minus y prime square equal to 0. y prime minus. So, this cancels this one and so you get y prime equal to minus 1 at x equal to x 2. So, here y prime should have uh, this value minus 1. So, let us see in this case what we have is the following. Here this is x 1 here and x 2 is moving here and this is the line y equal to x minus a and so x 2 is moving here. So, that x 2 we have to choose so that this curve hits this one orthogonally here this should be. So, this is what is actually x 2 here. So, that this is 90 degree in this case. So, this is the 
extremal y x y equal to y x and this is y equal to phi x which is x minus a given here. So, let us remove it from here. So, this is so at this point x 2 you can see that here we get 90 degree angle because y prime equal to minus 1 here. So, transverse duality condition again is the orthogonality condition in this case and if now we can take uh, other cases like this line is vertical if x 2 if x 2 y 2 moves on a vertical line that x equal to x 2 x equal to uh, constant x 2 here x equal to constant that is equal to x 2 let us say x 2 is fixed only uh, this one is moving then uh, we see that then delta x 2 is 0 and therefore, the first one here this delta x 2 is 0. So, we get only this second term in 14.5 14.5 then implies that f at f y prime at x equal to x 2 this must be equal to 0, because delta y 2 there is see this delta x 2 is 0 in this. So, this term is gone and you get f y prime at x equal to x 2 times delta y 2 equal to 0, delta y 2 is arbitrary and so we get this. Thank you very much for being this.